Hello? Hello? All right. Perfect. Great. Thank you all for coming. I see some more folks still trying to cram in here, so it's, uh, it's great to have everyone here to uh, learn more about uh, uh, Facebook's Next Generation Data Center Network. Right? So my name is Omar. I'm part of uh, uh, the Facebook networking team. I also wear a volunteer hat with OCP, supporting the OCP networking project. Um, love to see so many people here today. The OCP networking ecosystem is just incredible. Uh, I've been part of it since uh, the founding in 2013, um, but also been part of Facebook since then too, and there's a lot uh, that we want to share with you today. So just to recap, if you saw the keynote today, uh, Facebook infrastructure and specifically Facebook networking supports some of the largest communities in the world, uh, online communities. Uh, those communities send an absurd amount of traffic through the Facebook infrastructure um, of all different types, you know, messages, uh, video, uh, live broadcasts. All of those applications also wind up um, generating a lot of machine-to-machine -machine traffic inside of our data centers. So we talked also this morning about the machine learning, AI inference, uh, the video processing workloads that, uh, that come from all those applications. So if we take a look at what is that infrastructure that supports all these applications and services, especially from a networking perspective, you see these are the 15 regions that we've announced uh, that support uh, uh, Facebook. Each of those regions has a number of data center buildings inside of it. And then the network, there's network inside the buildings, there's network that connects all of those regions together, and there's network that connects us to the internet. Um, so for the purposes of today, I'm gonna go into uh, the networking in the region, inside the data centers. So what is that existing data center network that we have right now? Back in 2014, we announced our fabric uh, this is a tried and true workhorse for us. It's been out there for years. It has a familiar four-plane architecture, if you've seen this over the, the last several years. Uh, there are racks on the bottom. They connect into fabric switches. Those fabric switches then create pods that are connected by spines. Um, and then there's actually an edge tier layer that connects uh, to get out of uh, the, the region. As part of that fabric within OCP, We've been steadily contributing a number of our innovations to the, to the community, starting with the Wedge 40, going to the Wedge 100, uh, Backpack, uh, and, and even last year, Fabric Aggregator. So we've been continually working with the community on that. Two things I wanted to call out uh, from a contribution perspective, because it's gonna factor into our story about the next generation data center. The 100G optics, we actually contributed this in the beginning of 2017. It wasn't a, chain, it wasn't a brand new uh, specification, a brand new system or anything. It was uh, a simple change to say CW4 optics, can we specify uh, some changes to the temperature range, the longevity, and the distance requirements to make it much more feasible to deploy into our data centers at scale. Uh, this will factor into our story uh, coming up. The other thing also I wanted to recap was our fabric aggregator. We designed this uh, uh, and released this to the community last year, which was the, the scale uh, building block between our uh, data center buildings in our given region. So that's the existing network. What did we see as challenges? Over the past few years, we have seen challenges coming, and they've been, they've been coming fast. Um, the first one is the workload. So VJ covered this morning, the, the upcoming new hardware has a lot more demands on the rack, uh, from the rack in terms of bandwidth requirements, AI, machine learning, video, disaggregation. We also see that the regions were starting to hit limits. When we built the, our first region in Prineville uh, several years, many years ago, we originally had a design that was gonna support three buildings in a region. Um, but because of the need for more compute and storage, We've gone back to those existing regions and said, can we build new mega regions? Can we, build, can we double the footprint in the regions? Um, so both of those things together are putting pressures on that, on that workhorse fabric design. The racks are needing more bandwidth, and because of the, um, the, the more buildings in the region, we're seeing more pressure on the spine layers. Now, that's from the uh, demand side. If we look at the supply side, there were also a couple of factors we had to consider. 
uh, power. Power is in short supply. This is a picture of our backpack. Um, again, widely deployed uh, as part of our existing fabrics. Um, great from a modularity perspective, but it actually takes a lot of power because of the, the number of ASICs inside that switch. Just to reinforce the power story, you know, if you look at the, uh, the regions again, maybe we have enough real estate to build three or four more buildings you know, in, in a region. But what about the power, right? You just don't create more power, double the power in a region. So we have to be super efficient in thinking about, even if we have the room to, to build more buildings and fill them up with more servers, how can we be more power efficient? The other uh, supply side constraint we have to consider is optics. Um, what is the availability of optics at scale? And we wanted to get the, the effective capacity increases of the faster optics but we, those optics were not available at the scales that we needed, at the time frames that we needed. This is still a super important problem for us, uh, and we, we're doing a lot of work long term toward this. Last year, we talked about co package optics, uh, and in fact, just today, uh, we're announcing that we're doing a joint development forum with, uh, uh, with Microsoft, uh, specifically focusing on co package optics. But that doesn't uh, address the, the story of. Uh, our current data center needs and how we need to scale. All right, let's just go this way. So what we had to do over the past several years is rethink the topologies, the hardware, and the software. Uh, it's one of the things I love working about Facebook is that the team is constantly embracing this change. Even while we were designing Backpack back in 2016, um, we were thinking this is probably not gonna be the scale that we need several years down the line. Even as we were deploying fabric aggregator, we were saying, hey, you know what? This is gonna have to scale. What's the next step gonna be? So the team had to go and look at the topologies, the hardware and the software for our next generation data center. So that, the first part I'll go over is the network. The network has changed. We have two new topologies that comprise the data center network, F16 and HGrid. F16 is the new topology. It has, instead of four planes, it has 16 planes. Um, this architecture allows us to really increase the spine capacity uh, that was uh, under pressure that I talked about earlier. It also provides enough bandwidth to the racks uh, to get us that 1.6 terabit per rack. It also, and I'll go into this a little bit later, it has fewer chips. Uh, super important from a, a, a power perspective, uh, but I'll go into, uh, into how we achieve that a little bit later. Focusing on the speeds, how do we get that 4x uh, speed increase, that effective increase uh, to 400G, but using 100G optics? If we delve into it a little bit more, you can take a look at this diagram. Um, one of the options was to take our existing fabric with four planes and upgrade the planes to 400G, right? So you, we would have taken the same four plane design, but put in 400G switches. Um, this would have worked, but it would have required a reliance on 400G um, optics, which we've already talked about, weren't necessarily available at the scales that we need. And it would have required uh, the same sort of chassis design with, with all the same number of ASICs. So instead, what we went with was the, the picture on the bottom, right, which is 16 planes of 100G fabric, which give us the effective increase that we want, but with the mature optics of 100G. The other topology change that we made uh, was, was a scale up of the fabric aggregator that we talked about last year uh, to make sure that's able to handle uh, six uh, buildings in the region now. To go into a little bit more of a, of a technical diagram for this, um, this is a diagram of the, the six buildings in a region, each of which has a F16 fabric, and then it has an H grid in the middle uh, that's connecting each of those buildings up, right? Um, for more information about this, the creator of this diagram, who is awesome at this, <laughs> but he's also more importantly one of the leads on our data center team, Alexi, uh, who is responsible for a lot of the, uh, the designs of F16 and HGrid, he's giving a workshop session tomorrow. Uh, he will go into this in, in a lot more detail, why and, uh, the why and wherefores of how he came up with this. So I already talked a little bit, of, teased a little bit about what is that building block? What's that 128 by 100 building block? So to give a little bit of a taste of how we came up with this, uh, let's take a look at our existing building blocks. This is Backpack and Wedge 100. 
Backpack is, like I said, is a, is a core switch for us. Uh, it's great in terms of its modularity. Uh, some of the downsides of it is that it does have a, a lot of ASICs inside of it. Uh, and also, uh, it's more complex, right? Even though there are 12 separate FBOSSes running inside of there from a software perspective, managing a chassis is just more involved. Uh, more software, uh, more things to, for us to track. Let's look at the other building block, Wedge 100. Great from a single ASIC design, uh, but it's not very modular, it's not very expandable, right? From a, especially from the front panel. Uh, it is what it is, it's a 32 by 100 chip. But it has the benefit of the single ASIC. So what we're uh, happy to announce today, along with the new topologies, is the new building block switch, Mini, mini Pack. Mini Pack is our next generation 128 by 100 uh, switch. It's built on a single ASIC, uh, the Broadcom Tomahawk 3, 12.8T, um, but it has a modular design. It, it has the benefits of the single control plane, but it has a modular design with all the PIM cards. Um, and then, like I said before, it leverages the 100G optics uh, that are mature and available at scale. This has 50% uh, 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 less power, 50% uh, smaller uh, than, the, than the backpack it replaces. Uh, the modular architecture, uh, we'll go into more details about this. Um, a lot is spent on trying to make sure that the, uh, the ASIC is, is cooled. Um, but then you also see the fruable, the, the replaceable uh, line cards, as well as there is a new uh, microserver in there, Mini Lake, uh, that we'll be covering in more detail. That actually provides 32 gig more RAM for, uh, uh, for, our, uh, uh, for our software. So I've discovered it's a modular switch. It's also a flexible switch. That switch is being deployed at multiple tiers. It's being deployed at the fabric tier and the spine tier of F16. It's also being deployed within HGrid uh, throughout. So now that I've covered the topologies and the uh, building block switch, I can go into a little more detail as to the benefits of F16. It is, it is simpler and it is flatter, right? So if you take a look, the, the existing fabric, which we call internally F4, the F4 fabric, uh, you can see the number of layers that are there and particularly the number of ASIC hops that we have to go through. And F16 is on the right. It is the more simple design. Um, when we move to F16, two changes happen. We remove the edge switch tier. Um, we didn't need it anymore. We could connect directly from the spines up into the, the fabric aggregation layer. Uh, and then each of those uh, switches, which were previously um, an internal CLOS, you know, with, with 12 ASICs, we replace that with one ASIC. So what you see now is uh, really a far fewer hops, which means for us better performance, you know, there are fewer queuing points to go through. Um, it's simpler to manage, fewer control planes to have to manage. They're all pretty much the same control plane, you know, you're not talking about inside a chassis versus, um, you know, between switches. Uh, so it's simpler, it, fewer hops for better performance, and less power. So F16 has a lot of benefits for us uh, across the board. Uh, mini pack itself, as is our tradition, we will, we will contribute that. We are contributing that to OCP, full design package um, uh, to the networking project. One thing I wanted to call out to, to also think about the theme the theme for this OCP summit is open together, right? Um, and we do all of this uh, for, uh, you know, a lot for Facebook, but we also do this within the whole community. So um, Minipack is the switch that we designed. It's built by Edgecore. It runs FBOSS on top of it. Uh, but Edgecore also partnered with a couple of other um, initiatives or companies. Uh, Edgecore partnered with the Cumulus. So Cumulus is available as a commercial uh, NOS on top of Minipack. And Edgecore has also been working with the SciSonic community. You heard a lot about SciSonic this morning from Kushagra and Dave. Um, they're making the SciSonic uh, software available also on Minipack. So that brings me to the last part. We talked about the network topologies, the hardware. What about the software? So software is FBOSS for us. FBOSS from a component perspective is made up of these three high-level things. It has Linux at the bottom and then FBOSS uh, for the main applications uh, that control and manage uh, the routing uh, within the network. And then we have our open BMC software uh, that's also based on Linux but runs on a BMC. 
simple matter of software. For those of you who write software, it's, it's just a simple matter of software. How hard can it be? Um, Minipack presented a lot of challenges for the FBOSS team um, uh, because of so, so many new concepts. Uh, so first of all is this modular switch architecture. Um, even though FBOSS runs on Backpack, which is a chassis switch, it runs 12 different instances of, of FBOSS on, on Backpack. Minipack is one control plane, so it is talking to all 128 ports, uh, something that we didn't have in the, in the previous designs. Um, single control plane, single ASIC, but it is a new ASIC, right? It is in the new uh, Tomahawk 3 ASIC, and so the team had to, to onboard that into, the, into production. The modularity of the line cards and the, the, uh, to get the speed support and the flexibility of the speed uh, that we wanted. Uh, a lot of work to support the external FIs um, with I squared C, MDIO, FPGA work that we had to do. Um, so all of this was part of the so just the simple matter of software that we had to do. Um, one of the things that interesting also thermal challenges on the open BMC side, we wound up programming a lot of the, the fan control, temperature sensor control to make sure that the, the thermal uh, environment was maintained appropriately for, for Minipack. If you look at the, the, the fleet again, right, and now Minipack is, is there as the most recent addition, uh, FBOSS, our software, has to support the whole fleet, right? So even though we have greenfield data centers going into production, we also have to support the, a, a huge brownfield of existing, uh, existing fleet and then upgrading and migrating that existing fleet. So FBOSS is the software that works around all of that. So as part of the software development, there are three different principles that we, we, we'd adhere to during the development of FBOSS for Minipack and F16. We wanna make sure that uh, um, we have a single, the, the overall principle is this FBOSS image has to be a single image that works across the fleet. In order to do that, we had to put a lot more uh, hardware abstractions in place. We really beefed out our testing uh, facilities, and we also stuck to this continuous deployment model. Um, for those of you who are, we, we've talked about this a lot, but um, to reinforce, we deploy early and we deploy often. Uh, as often as we can, uh, ideally uh, in the matter of days, maybe if we have to go to weeks, but as soon as we can, uh, maintaining a cadence of updating software into the fleet. Just to br bring a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, examples here, one of the reasons as uh, we needed more hardware abstractions um, was for something as simple as bringing up a port, right? Bringing up a port in the uh, in Wedge 100 and Backpack was simpler because we didn't have this layer in between. We introduced a, a gearbox layer to give us the flexibility uh, that we would want over time. Um, so if we wanted to then have a, a card that's programming, or we need to have a card that supports, say, 40 gig or 100 gig or possibly even 200 gig at some point, um, the gearbox gives us that flexibility to program the lanes at the speeds that we want. Um, that required a new layer of software uh, to, to abstract out that hardware component for us. On the testing side, we built out a huge lab um, to, uh, to simulate the, the F16 uh, uh, topology and the H-grid topologies. And on top of this, we, we put in a lot of continuous testing capabilities. So pretty much now when, when a diff, a code change is submitted in for FBOSS, uh, it's run against hundreds of tests automatically. Each diff is being uh, tested and regression tested uh, so that it works across the fleet. Uh, so to recap, we can see a lot of the, the, the changes that, that have had to happen inside the data center. Because of the increasing demands, the fabric was, show, was getting pressure, right? And there was also the limited, uh, the, the physical constraints. Not as, we don't have to, we don't have infinite power uh, and the optics at scale we really had to consider. So the teams all came together to rethink network hardware and software, and these are the, these are the components of the new data center. F16 and, H6, uh, F16 and HGrid as the network topologies, uh, the new modular switch, and FBOSS as the software that unifies them. If you want more information, like I said, I mentioned some of the talks the new data center topology we're having tomorrow. Um, the hardware we'll go into uh, 
uh, SAM issue and how we'll go into the details of Minipack and uh, Mini Lake. Um, and then a couple of software talks around, you know, what do we have to do within the software for the switches themselves, as well as some of the testing and the deployment software at scale, the push software. How do we push the software across the fleet? Uh, that team is, is going over there in a workshop too. All right, so here's the timeline. Um, you see Minipack there. What is next? You know, what is coming up? You know, we're always uh, continuing to, uh, uh, to innovate. And so actually to that last bullet, there is actually one more thing. There is one more thing to mention here. Um, I mentioned that we wanted this modular flexible switch in, in all the tiers, right? And actually what we really wanted, we didn't want just one switch, we wanted two switches that could serve that role, right? Uh, for any number of reasons. So I'm happy to announce that we, in, we embarked on a joint development project with Arista as a longtime partner for us in the network. And we've, we've traditionally uh, worked with Arista uh, as an OEM for our networking gear. But in this case, we said, hey, let's work together on a joint development of a switch together. So happy to announce that the, uh, the Arista 7368 uh, is, that, uh, is that collaboration, the result of that collaboration. Um, and that was done jointly with Arista and Facebook. That switch runs both Arista EOS as well as FBOS, right? So it is, it is embracing the, the concept of disaggregation uh, and openness that, uh, that we are uh, espousing in OCP. It works across all tiers. It has the same benefits in terms of the, uh, the modularity um, and the flexibility, the single ASIC. Uh, and in fact, you see a picture there of uh, the Arista switch deployed in one of our H-grid tiers um, where it's racked up um, to provide that, that inner building connectivity uh, in H-grid. So coming back again to the theme of open together for the summit, I think this joint development with Arista really embraces uh, that open development. Um, and to, to talk more about that, I wanted to call out one person who's in that uh, uh, picture and invite him up on stage. Please help me welcome the Chief Operating Officer of Arista, Anshul Sadana. Hey, Anshul. Thank you, Omar. So thanks. Uh, I've, uh, I've talked about the, the joint development. Would love to hear your perspective on, on, how, on how that uh, collaboration with Facebook went. Uh, absolutely. Um, as the Facebook team knows, we've been partners since 2011. I still remember a comment from Najem in the very early days of Arista, where he came to us and said, I'm worried someday you'll have thousands of customers and you won't have time for our cloud customers. Um, as you know, we are very focused in the cloud. But more importantly, unlike many other companies, when companies like Facebook are doing something innovative and disruptive and can build on your own, other companies take an approach of they try to sort of say good things, but they really want you to fail so that they can sell their gear to you. Our approach is our customers need to go faster. And in order to go faster, you have to do things to optimize for yourself. And the misconception many people have is all of this is done just for cost of the switch. The reality is it's done for operational efficiencies, power, and getting the next generation architecture faster. But when you do that just on your own, you're single sourced. So how do you manage that risk and remain dual sourced? So we were very happy to partner with Facebook. Um, I'm very proud of not just the product that we built together, but the team that worked on this together, both from Facebook and Arista. It's been about one and a half years of work to get to a design and a product that truly is the next gen and was able to ramp to very high volume very, very early on in its cycle. Um, there's some assumptions both teams generally make that had to be broken because for the first time, we were supplying our very early prototypes to Facebook at high volume. The prototype count is higher than our normal production volume for a new product, right? So you have to really ramp those things as well and so on. So I would say a unique experience for both the teams, but a great partnership. We're very thankful to the entire Facebook team for that as well. And I believe this has a great future um, out in the front as well. 
Great, great. Actually, I've seen a few members of, the, of that team there. I don't know if, if, if you're part of the, uh, the Facebook network team or the Arista team, you want to stand up and just uh, uh, wave and say hi if you're there. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. And then, you know, maybe, uh, maybe one more thing, if you wanted to comment on this, the theme of Open Together and, uh, and OCP, you know, we're, we're excited to be here with you and your thoughts on that. Absolutely. Uh, as many of you know, Andy Bechtelsheim, our founder and chairman, has been on the OCP board since day one. Uh, we've been partnering with Microsoft on Sci and Sonic now for over two or three years. And this is uh, a product that we're announcing today along with Facebook uh, that we are opening up to the OCP community. So we're working with the OCP board to open up the specs. In a few months, you should have all of that uh, out there. And uh, you can run EOS or FPOS or any other operating system you like on it as well. Okay. Well, great. Well, thanks again for, uh, for that joint development. And that wraps up for us. Uh, just wanted to recap, right, uh, the new Facebook data center, um, the topologies, the hardware, the two switches that we have part of this, as well as the software. So um, if you want to know more, please come uh, to the workshops tomorrow. Uh, this is work on, you know, you saw some of the folks here. This is work on behalf of a tremendous number of people uh, at our companies, uh, Facebook team from hardware, software, network, optics, sourcing, project management. Um, a tremendous number of folks have gone into that, uh, have put, poured into that. So uh, please come to the workshops tomorrow to learn more about it. And thank you for coming today. Thank you. Thanks.